Namaste. I hope you are all doing very well. And uh, uh, you know, I've brought some very very uh, interesting topic today. Uh, you remember uh, last time I made a video? In case you have seen it, uh, we, I talked about uh, the psychology behind law of attraction. Why and how? Uh, you know, psychologically we can say that yes, law of attraction works. And in that video, I also uh, mentioned. Uh, by the way, that's a law of a psychology part of law of attraction. I will put in the link in the description below. So if you haven't seen that video, you can go ahead and take a look. And uh, in that video, I promised that uh, we would also be talking about the quantum physics behind law of attraction. You know, where is the evidence of law of attraction? You know, in quantum physics or uh, science. So this is what that video is all about. You know. It's going to be a little bit, uh, you know, difficult uh, or complex topic. So I'm going to basically skip out all the science part of it and only focus on uh, just the implications. Like a particular experiment was done, but what is the meaning behind it? You know, what, what does it really mean? So that's what I will focus on. So I think to start with, we need to start with the cat in the box experiment. There was a scientist named Schrodinger who uh, basically created a thought experiment, like he didn't actually kill the cat in case he was uh, you know, uh, worried about uh, animal rights. He didn't kill the cat, it's a thought experiment. So in that thought experiment, let's assume that we have a box, right? And we put a cat in the box and we also put a device, which has a 50-50 chance that it might emit something that could kill the cat or it may not emit it, so it won't kill the cat, right? So we don't know what's going to happen whether that device emits it or not, we don't know. And then we close the box and then wait. So after some time, when we're looking at that closed box, what do we know? Is the cat dead or is the cat alive? What is it? We don't know, we don't know. But the fact is, until we open that box, take a look, we won't know whether the cat is dead or alive. So the cat is in indeterminate state. Like Nobody knows what that state of the cat is. So it's like parallel universes, like, you know, when a lot of times you would hear people saying that all the possibilities exist at the same time, all loads and loads of these spiritual people tell you that all the possibilities exist at the same time, right? Same thing now, quantum physics is also coming to that, the concept of multiverse, like parallel universes, right? So basically all of these possibilities that might exist, they all exist in a uh, parallel universe somewhere. So in this case, in this particular case, that cat being dead or alive, it's basically two parallel universe. In one universe, the cat is dead, or one universe, cat is alive. So the question is, when you open that box, what are you going to see? How would that, why is it that if you open the box, that cat seems to be dead, or somebody else opens the box, the cat is alive? Why does that happen? What are the factors that make the decision on whether the cat is dead or uh, alive when a particular box, a person opens the box? Right? It's not random. It's not random. We'll come to that in the next experiment we'll talk about. So just keep, hold that thought in your mind that it's not random. A particular person, when he opens that box, most likely he would find that cat to be dead. Some other person, if he opens that box, most likely he might find that cat to be alive. It depends on that person. How? We look at another thing. So there was another, uh, you know, initially when the people were studying light, so it was considered that photons, light behaves like a particle. You know, they are photon particles. Then later on people thought, oh, you know what, light also acts as a wave. So it has wavelength, frequency. So Basically, then, you know, quantum physics realized that, okay, it acts sometimes as a particle, sometimes as a wave, you know. But remember one thing, hold that thought, again, park that thought, it never behaves both as particle and as wave at the same time. It either acts as particle or as a wave. Okay. Then the, the, these similar experiments were extended to electrons and recently like uh, protons as well, where they found out that all of these quantum elements, they either act as particle or wave. But they don't act as both. Like they don't act, they are not the kind of things which has property of both particle and the wave. So because if that were to be the case, if you create an experiment where all the wave related properties can be uh, 
determined and pro particle properties can be determined. You'll be able to trigger both these things at the same time. So both the uh, instruments would uh, yield results, but it doesn't happen. If those things are acting as particle, they can act as particle. They don't show properties of wave. When they're acting as wave, they don't show properties of particles. So that's a fact. That's what has been found out already through these experiments, right? So now remember that. Keep that also in your mind. So what in 2017, uh, what these scientists, some of the scientists did this, like uh, they basically uh, send these proton waves onto a satellite and back, right? So there was around 10, 10 millisecond uh, round trip, right? Because they wanted to see whether the electrons decide they want to act as particle or wave when they are emitted or is it because like, you know, they are measuring it. So that's as uh, at the point when they're measuring it, that's when for, uh, these protons decide that they want to act as wave or a particle, right? So they wanted to create that distance, that gap, some 10 millisecond uh, uh, gap between them. What scientists found out, now I'm not going to go into the science of it, the complexities of that experiment and how this was proved. I'm just going to give you the results, all right? The, just the results. So the results, what they found out was that if scientists decided that they want our photons to behave like particles, and they said this, uh, then the uh, protons uh, behaved as particles. When the scientists uh, set up the instrument in a way that they could, uh, you know, uh, detect a wave, then protons behaved as a wave, right? Not together. It's either this or that. So scientists thought that. Is it because the protons at that moment when the measurements are being taken, they are basically, uh, you know, deciding that, okay, this, this guy, you know, this scientist, this instrument uh, or this scientist is expecting me to be a wave, so I should act as wave, or this scientist is expecting me to act as a particle, so I should act as particle. So whether proton was taking that decision at that moment when the detection was being done or was it being done? at that start when the proton was emitted, you know, 10 milliseconds ago, right? So what this scientist did is, they created a scenario where proton is emitted, right? And it's already in the air, it's going to satellite and coming back. And while it's go has been emitted, right? And before it touches those instruments, scientists change the instruments to detect the opposite of what it was started with, right? And doesn't matter how they did it, they found out that, you know, at that moment, when the proton had already been emitted and the uh, you know, detection was done, uh, cha detection was uh, changed from particle to wave or vice versa, proton still behaved the way, you know, at that moment, the detection was done in that manner where it was expected to behave. Right, whether as a particle or wave. You know, the implications of this, implications of this, there are two implications, big implications. That matter, you know, protons, somehow they are trying to behave the way the person observing those protons wants them to behave, or expects them to behave. And every time the person who is observing them changes his decision on how that person expects them to behave, wants them to behave. Protons start, the protons behavior changes. And not, that is the first implication, right? So it's like the person observing is manipulating those protons into behaving certain way. That's one implication. And by the way, even on this, I need to add one more thing. It has already been proven by science in quantum physics that the act of observing a matter has an impact on that matter. It is a fact. So when you observe something, when you think about something, when you basically anything, when you interact with something, like even though it's unilateral, you're just looking at it or you're just hearing it, it impacts that, that particular thing. You know? So when you're trying to, uh, you know, in quantum physics as well, like when you actually, the fact that you're trying to observe 
an electron changes the position of the electron. The fact that you are trying to observe proton changes the behavior of the proton, right? So every single thing, the fact that you are observing something changes the behavior of that object, that mat, uh, that particular entity. I will not say matter because there is no matter; it's all energy, right? So basically, of that entity. So that is one aspect, right? Second aspect is that they basically created a scenario that the decision for whether the proton should act or as a particular wave was taken later, which is right now, for instance. If I set the instrument up right now, but the proton had already been emitted. So I set up the instrument as to, uh, to expect it to be a particle. Proton got emitted. I immediately changed it before proton could come here, come back here. I immediately changed it to act like wave and proton acted like wave, which means my decision right now, right now, changed how that proton decided 10 milliseconds ago when it got emitted. You know, implications that my decision right now can change the past. It can possibly change the past. Right? Now, I'll just give it a, uh, you know, give you guys a couple of minutes. Think about it. Like whatever we do right now, whatever we decide right now, obviously changes are now, right? It changes are now and it has an impact on our future, for sure, right? But this experiment proved that not only of now and future, there is also an impact on the past, right? So somehow that proton at the time of emission, decided to behave in a particular way, knowing that by the time, right now the instrument is set up differently, but by the time it goes to the satellite, comes back, the instrument would be set up differently. Huge implications, huge implications. Again, a lot of spiritual people, they, tell, they talk about this, that there is no timeline, like all the time, past, present and future, it all exists right now. It's all there right now, right? Again. Same thing was proved through this experiment, right? So now think about it. What are the implications? A lot of people like I've heard people say that, you know, they come out of uh, unis and whatever, and then they say, oh, they didn't teach us anything useful. We can't apply this knowledge in real life. You know, they, we don't know how to apply whatever we studied in college into our job, you know? Well, I don't know about that because like, uh, you know, whatever the theory they taught me in uh, uni, in engineering, uh, you know, I still follow the same exact theory, same exact principles and, uh, you know, I'm one of the best programmers in the world, simply by following those uh, those theories. You know, that was enough for me. But again, maybe because like, you know, just the way I am going to tell you now about how this particular knowledge can be applied in real life, maybe I applied the same thing over there as well. So it's just a matter of understanding how to apply that knowledge. So in this case, like such a like out there crazy kind of a thing that we just discussed, right? So how can we apply it in real life? So now let's with that knowledge that the matter you know, is uh, affected by our observation. Some of this matter basically, you know, acts the way we want it to act. We expect it to act. We think that it's going to act, right? So what is what does the law of attraction say, by the way? That whatever you think, you bring about, right? Whatever you think about, whatever you uh, expect, that's what is going to come to you. Here, at a granular level, that's exactly what you see. That's exactly what you see. Protons behave exactly the way you want them to behave. You expect them to behave. You think of they would behave, right? So that's the first part. First proof. You know, you extrapolate it at a bigger scale and you see how the whole universe, like the, if the building blocks of the universe are behaving as per your observation, your expectation, you can extrapolate it and then suddenly you get the big picture. So that's one part of it. And second part, that 
let's go back to that cat in the box experiment. That now we know that you know the, the it's a fact that our current decision, current situation, can change the past events as well, right? So now we uh, know that our current decision can change the past events. Let's look at the cat in the box experiment again. Okay. There, uh, let's say we are at the moment when we want to open that box. You know, some time has passed since we put the cat in the box. We don't know whether the cat is dead or alive. And now we go to the box and we are about to open it. Now think about it. If the cat is dead, it would have happened sometime in the past. If the cat is alive, uh, cat is alive, again it would have been something that is, that is the past, right? Cat is not necessarily going to die as we open the box. It would have been dead at least a moment ago, a fraction of a second ago, or one minute ago, or thirty minutes ago. At some point in the past, it would have died when if we find the cat to be dead, right? So it's a past event whether the cat died or not, right? So what makes that difference? Like when we open that box, right? Technically, if the cat was supposed to be dead, but when we open the box, it's alive. What it means is the past has changed, right? Or if the cat is uh, supposed to be alive, but we open the box, we find it dead. Then again, that means past has changed. Right? So it's that moment when we are taking that decision. We are impacting the past events, right? And how is that being impacted? Again, when you look at the second experiment, what we think about. So, if this experiment were to be done in real life, real life, obviously you would have to kill a lot of cats. But if it were to be done in real life, uh, I can bet that majority of the people. Who are confident and they truly believe that cat is going to be alive, and they have that feeling of love for that cat. When they open that box, the cat would be alive. And the majority of the people who don't care or who basically like you know, you know, they don't want the cat to be alive. They're like just, just you know, who cares? Like let it be. Or some, especially the people who actually take pleasure. There are lots of people like that. You know that. We know that. Everyone knows that. That who take pleasure. Or you know what? Let it be dead. You know. So those people would basically more likely to find the cat dead. So it's basically our thoughts, our beliefs, our expectations that are changing the results we see. So how do we apply it in real life? Let's say uh, you know. You are facing a situation where you don't know the result, right? So, for for instance, maybe you went for an interview, you don't know the result, right? Or maybe you went for the, an exam, you don't know the result. So, what happens? Like, there you can apply the situation that until and unless you have seen the result, that result can be changed. Until and unless you have seen the result, that result can be changed. So. You would see that after an exam, there will be lots of people who know for sure that they're gonna pass. Everyone knows they're gonna pass. Everyone, you know, it's just they just are worried more about like whether they're going to be like you know get like top the university or college or not, or you know those kind of like people. Or some of them like yeah, whether they're going to get sixty percent or eighty percent. And that, those are the questions they have in their mind, not the fact they're going to pass or fail. So those people you see almost always pass. So then there will be some people you know that you know what. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Like it's very difficult. And most likely those people usually always fail. But then there will be some borderline cases. You know, truly, truly, they may pass, they may fail. Like you know, nobody knows. But then, depending on what they are thinking, their belief, their expectation, and their mindset at that moment when they see the result, they will see that result. That's how you apply it. So until the end, um, until the moment you actually get the result, get to see the result. If you keep a positive mindset, assume that it's going to be a positive result, and not just like superficially, you have to feel that 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 deep inside, you know, that that confidence, that calmness, that calmness, that calmness of uh, you know your mind. 
because when your mind is calm, the whole universe listens to you. So to that calm, you have to have that calmness of mind, no worry or stress or like jumbled up mind, you know. And if you are able to enter happiness, you know, gratefulness, if you hold on to those, and that that solid confidence and expectation, that knowledge, not like egoistic. Oh, this is what's going to happen. No, just that that still calm knowledge that you know, you know what's going to happen, right? You just know, you know how it is. So it's going to happen, right? So with that kind of feeling, if you are able to sustain it until the time that result comes, and make sure that if you get worried about something, if some doubts start creeping in, or some some of the questions start coming up, you use self-talk. You talk to your own self. Ideally, you want to close down, uh, close the room, and talk to yourself uh, aloud. You know, don't be worried about people saying, "Oh, he is talking to himself." No, talk to yourself aloud because it works better than you talking in your head. So, talk to yourself aloud. Think of all the pros and cons and explain to yourself why and how that result is the one that is going to happen that you want, and then bring yourself back to that that same positive state of mind. So, if you are able to do that and sustain that positive state of mind until the result comes. Then definitely you will see that result. A lot of times you, people think that oh you know what I did that but still the result didn't come. No, it doesn't work like that. If you truly deep inside manage to do it that way, you, know, you would always get that result. So it's because like if we are not getting that result, it's because like we have had those doubts and we have not been able to address them. It's like we haven't been able to uh, vibrate with them. Uh, so that's basically the reason. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't get those. So next time somebody says, you know, that all of these things don't work or whatever, like what is the evidence? What is the proof? Mm -hmm. Just give them these uh, uh, experiments I talked about, and there is there are a few more experiments that have been done. You know, but these are the two most important ones. All right. So uh, now you know that whatever the practice you are following you know it's not it's basically 100% science and then yes maybe like uh, you know ever since that christianity came along and uh, you know the, there was a divide that got created between spirituality and science but thankfully like again those two different parts are converging and science and spirituality are again merging into the same path and more and more of the spiritual things that uh, you know we follow, uh, more and more of the evidence of that is becoming a uh, you know is coming forth from science. So I hope you guys uh, found this video informative, and uh, so I hope uh, this information was useful and uh, you'll be able to apply it in your real life. Just keep at it. No matter what happens, until the time you see the result, assume that it is in your favor. That's it. And see how it changes your life. All right. So until next time, Namaste and all the best.